Alright, so in this video here, we're going to go through the, the second half of the BSTEX uh, setup steps. Um, I did do the first uh, setup steps. We went over the tail. Um, I'm going to go over the, the cyclic setup here next. Um, I've already done this on my own before doing this video, so I do have the head installed now. Uh, but I'll walk through each of the steps and kind of explain a little bit about what I've done uh, to the head and, and I guess really how each of the steps works, I guess. Um, it's actually very easy to do these setup steps. Um, just get yourself an empty tail shaft and a swash leveler uh, here at the beginning. Um, and then, you know, get yourself a pitch gauge or, um, you know, myself, I like to use a, uh, a tool that I found um, called RC Heli Pitch. I have found this one on the Android market here. Uh, they've got quite a few uh, different tools here that you can use as well. Uh, the one that I like a lot is the uh, pitch by sensor. Uh, it gives you a nice, uh, uh, fairly accurate uh, sensor. You can see the phone is a little big on this bird. Um, I made up a jig that I could put in the grips um, so that I could mount it and uh, work my pitches uh, to figure out what my measurements are. Um, this tool actually has another couple of cool features. Um, you know, you can calculate your pitch by entering the length of the blades and um, you know if you fold the blades and you're at full full pitch you've got a gap here um, and you can measure this gap and enter it in here and get a value out of it one cool feature about this uh, tool is that it has an option uh, for you, you to use your camera and actually take a picture of the helicopter uh, you would take a picture of the blades um, you know as they are pitched um, and literally you'll be able to um, trace the uh, the angles right on the screen and it'll do the calculations for you. It'll do the trig and figure out uh, what the actual pitch is. That's a pretty slick way to do it. Um, um, yeah, it's just kind of a cool gadget kind of thing. And I've done some tests uh, between this and a couple other different ways of measuring pitch and it actually comes out fairly accurate. So um, just a footnote about that, this tool is called RC Heli Pitch. Um, there's another one about gear ratios too, but uh, this is what I used on this bird uh, to set up the pitches and uh, I got this thing flying very nicely uh, by doing so. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the steps. Um, we left off uh, on the tail there, we left off on step F, uh, so we're going to pick up with step G. Um, I know there's been a lot of kind of back and forth about exactly how step G works, uh, but when you have the head off and you've got the swash leveler on there, uh, it actually makes it very easy to set up. Uh, essentially, when you go into step G, um, the servos are going to sit at their neutral position, um, the, the, the center pulse that we picked earlier. In this particular case, it's 1,520. Um, but the point is, you use that to put your servo horns on um, to, to get yourself as close to 90 degrees as possible. Do that on all your servos. And the idea is, uh, using your radio, you can use the, the stick and go left and right and select one servo at a time. Here's the important part, and I think this is where everybody gets confused. When you go to go to a one particular servo to adjust it to 90 degrees, all three of the servos move away from their reference position. So as you're working your way around the head, doing each of the servos, you get one to 90, then you move to the next servo, it'll jitter. You'll get that one set to 90, but remember, this one's still sitting there. It's not at that reference position, that 1520 that we talked about. They're all sitting, basically waiting for where you decide to stick it at level here, okay? So the reason that's important is that once you get all your servos at 90, you drop your swash leveler on the bird while you're sitting on one of the three servos. It doesn't matter. Um, if you move back to the reference position, you'll see all your servos will chatter and move away from where you stuck them. If you try and set your swash plate level there, you're going to be all out of whack when you get down later. So long story short, on step G, get your servos as close to 90 as you can. Then as you're moving around the, the, the swash plate on each of the servos to set your true 90, leave, them, leave it on one of your servos when you drop your swash level around to level your swash with your links. Uh, once you do that, everything is going to work out like it's supposed to at mid-stick in real life, so to speak, when you're out of setup. Um, so that's enough about that. I know a lot of people have uh, had a lot of back and forth. There's not a ton of documentation in the manual about exactly 
when you're supposed to level the swash plate, but that's when. Not on the reference position on step G, but on one of the servos because all three of the servos go to your chosen locations. Um, so that being said, once you've done that, we can move on to some of the other steps. Uh, the step H for the swash plate mix are very easy. The default's 120 degrees. We got 120 degree swash plate, so just leave that. Now the swash plate servo direction step, it can become a little confusing, but you do it in two phases. First off, you move your, your collective, uh, you move that up and down just to make sure all the servos move the swash up and down in unison. You can use the tail stick to go through the defaults uh, that you find in the manual until you find one that makes the whole swash move up and down at the, uh, in unison so the swash doesn't tilt. The direction doesn't matter yet. Once you get that done, then you start playing with the directions. Uh, I had mentioned this in the uh, uh, T-Rex 250 build as well, but we have to unthink the idea of CCPM mixing because instead of each servo having a, a role, each function now has a role. Pitch, meaning moving the servo up and, or the swash up and down. Uh, aileron, meaning moving the swash plate left and right. And elevator, moving the swash plate forward and backwards. So once you've got the whole swash moving all in unison, then you check. You know, you move, you move your collective. If it's backwards, you reverse just the pitch channel and you're reversing. You just go and you're reversing and find just pitch and reverse it if you need to. Now do the same thing, you know, move the elevator stick forward and backwards. Does the swash tilt the right way? If not, reverse just that function of elevator and aileron. Essentially when you're done, you'll have the swash moving up and down like it's supposed to and the cyclic doing what it's supposed to as well. Um, once you've got that set up uh, for your servo directions, um, then you can get into the cyclic pitch geometry. That's the infinite, infinite step J. Um, what I've found, and I've actually set up um, five beef stexes, I think, over the last probably about two months now. Um, and what I've found works best for step J, if you're really concerned about getting into the blue, you know, as it says, um, I think everybody can agree that six degrees um, on the blades is more important than the color that you actually get um, on the light on the B6. Of course, six degrees and blue is optimal, right? So what I personally do is I'll, in step J, I'll move the cyclic with the stick until I see the light turn blue. Once I see the light turn blue on the B stacks, then I'll go into the mechanicals here uh, to do what I can to make, when, you know, when you have the blades this way, to make a blade show me six degrees, okay? Um, worst case scenario, if I can't do that, I want to make sure it's not more than six. I can maybe make it five because, because I can always move deeper into the blue, if you will, to get to that six. Really, six degrees and just that blue is where I like to set these things up, so that's how I do it. Um, for this particular bird, um, the only thing that I had to do on this particular build uh, to make that six degrees a little bit more accurate, um, uh, there's a great thread in the BSTEX forums talking about the infamous six degrees and, and how uh, things you can do to the swash plate uh, to change that. Um, on the 250 build that I did, I actually extended the outer swash balls and I also moved the inner swash balls inwards, okay? On this particular one, I could leave the outer swash balls just like they were, so I didn't have to modify any of that stuff, but I did have to move the inner swash balls uh, inward a little bit, so I had a little bit less throw coming from the swash to the blades, so that I could hit six degrees at blue. I didn't have any balls left that didn't have stands on them, um, so all I did was took the ball off, flipped it over. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in this video, probably not, but I'll take a picture. But uh, basically, after the link, I have a, a little kind of a nub that sticks up out of there um, because I just have the ball on there backwards. Um, the nice thing is I don't get any binding that way uh, because I have this little extra space here. As I tip the swash, the link isn't rubbing on the screw head that's on the ball. So for me, that worked out great. Um, you know, it doesn't even really look that bad. So I'm going to leave it just like that. You know, when I get this back to the owner, if he wants to buy balls without stands, he can always replace them. Uh, one other important thing is you only have to do, if you're going to move the balls in on the swash plate, or on the inner ring of the swash plate, you only have to do the ones for the grips. Um, for this particular head, 
if I was to move these balls in for the uh, uh, the swash lock here, this geometry wouldn't actually be 90, it would be inward. You know, this plastic link would be facing inward a little bit. So I left these stock because I want this geometry, you know, to be the way it is. Um, so again, just to reiterate, step J, don't think too heavy into it. Um, if you want to look at it the way I did, I found this just makes it easy to, for me to make, to make sense of it. Uh, go into the blue on the B stacks, just into the blue, and then work your way up the mechanics until you can make a blade show you six degrees. Uh, once you've done that, you know that the B-Stex is going to be able to have optimal resolution going on in the mechanicals here. Um, once you have step J completed, uh, then you can move on uh, to setting up your collective and cyclic range. Collective pitch range is pretty easy. Uh, you'll just go into that setting. Um, that's uh, step K. Move the stick to full positive. Again, you still have your uh, pitch gauge on here, right? Um, Move to full positive, and then uh, use that uh, use that stick there. Um, you can use the uh, tail or the rudder stick, and, and just increase or decrease the pitch that you want until you get positive to be the number that you want it to be. Now these two are independent. You could, if you wanted to, program more positive than negative on the stick. I don't recommend that. Later you can do that in a pitch curve in your radio if you want to. So make them equal. For this particular bird. Um, I went with uh, 11 and a half positive and 11 and a half negative, um, and that gives me plenty of pitch. Really, for this size bird, you really don't need to run that much. Um, it, it, it's a lot easier to load the head up and stuff. So, um, but uh, for swash plate cyclic limit, um, you know, uh, old school in the old school fly bar world, you would be setting up your limits as you would be flying in the real world. Well, on the Beast X, you don't do that. You're going to set the limits here uh, for cyclic using the same concept as you do with setting the limits on the tail, uh, meaning that you're going to want to create a situation where you can get as much limit as possible on the cyclic as you can without any binding. The Beast X is going to decide to do, you know, it's going to decide how much pitch to feed you uh, based on how you're flying and what you set up uh, for a behavior or whatnot. So really you just want to essentially move the cyclic to the extremes for aileron and elevator and then uh, you can again use the tail stick to adjust how deep it goes for aileron or elevator um, and you know rotate your head and just check and see if you're getting any binding. Um, for me I, I used, uh, again I was using this so I used my uh, phone uh, for the pitch gauge and I ended up uh, setting it up so I get about uh, 11 degrees of cyclic limit as well. Um, I know in the manual it, it mentions that, um, it, the, again there's an indicator that comes on for this one too, in the blue uh, is optimal again. Um, so you want to be able to get this in the blue and get a respectable amount of limit. Uh, typically 10 to 12 degrees is good meaning that the B-Stex has enough room to breathe when it's uh, correcting maneuvers or helping you perform maneuvers. So uh, for this one I, I was able to get, it was about 10 and a half or 11, um, I don't quite remember, but I had enough and I was able to get the LED on the B-Stex to turn blue. So that's optimal for cyclic. Um, each of the control behaviors is going to determine how much real world cyclic throw you get meaning your flip and your roll rates, how fast does it flip over, how fast does it roll over, or if you go into transmitter mode you can set that on your own with dual rates and expo and stuff like that. But um, Once you have the, the collective and cyclic all squared away, the last two steps you want to do is tell the B-Stex which way to correct and also tell the B-Stex how to optimize a pirouette. Um, this setting is actually pretty easy, step M, sensor directions. Um, there's just a few defaults you can uh, flip through with the tail uh, with a rudder stick on your transmitter. Basically what you want to do is you want to tip the helicopter and you want to make the swash plate move in the opposite direction. If you're holding the helicopter you should be able to move it and essentially get the swash plate to sit uh, where it's at. So if I was to tip forward the swash plate would move back to correct it and the same for aileron. Um, so you can just go through the, each of the defaults to find which one makes the swash plate do that for you. If you've done the earlier steps like you're supposed to, one of the defaults will do that for you. 
Uh, the pirouette optimization, on a small bird like this, it's really easy to see the effects between the two, but basically there's two settings, normal or reversed. Um, what happens is when you go to that setting, the swash is going to move to some obnoxiously deep arbitrary cyclic movement, either all the way forward or all the way to the side. It doesn't matter where that goes. All that matters is that after the swash is sitting in that direction, when you rotate the helicopter, you want the swash plate to stay in that same orientation. Basically what that means is, for instance, if this swash plate is facing forward, like towards the nose or towards this direction globally, when you turn the helicopter, that swash should keep facing in that direction all the way around the rotation. The nice thing about these small birds is you can actually spin it fairly fast, kind of like this, and you'll, you should be able to see that swash plate sit still. It shouldn't move at all. If you've got it the wrong way, the swash plate's going to dance around. It's going to go like this, and it's going to be obvious. Um, you know, you can try and do that with a bigger bird, too. Um, you know, something like this is really easy to pick up and do that. But um, that's kind of a quick and dirty on the last uh, steps for the setup menus, um, going through the, uh, uh, the swash plate-related uh, settings. Uh, thanks for watching, and um, there will be more information in the build video, too, and uh, some more pictures of the head that I've got set up here, too. All right, thanks for watching.